Hello and welcome to A Cat in the Garden. I recently did a quite a bit of work out here actually prepping the garden for fall and I'm glad I did because today is the first day that really feels like fall here. I woke up this morning and I was absolutely freezing. It was in the mid 40s which I feel like is unheard of for Texas in October, but that's okay. I waited a little bit to come out here and it has started to warm up a little bit. So I felt better about bringing that many outside, but I figured since I had done so much in the garden recently, it was a good time to do a garden tour. So this is gonna be our October garden tour. We are saying goodbye to the summer garden and hello to fall. So let's get to it. So first up here in my little orchard area, I wanted to highlight a couple of new additions, a couple of trees that we recently planted. So this is another peach tree to go along with this one here. The plum tree I'm hoping is just losing its leaves because it's fall, but as you guys know, it hasn't been doing well all season. But I also planted this bay leaf tree, which I do need to prune back, but I was waiting because it started a bunch of new growth from the base and from some of the branches. So now that I know where the growth is coming from, I can prune back all the dead stuff. I promise it's not totally dead. There's a lot going on in here, but those just got planted into the ground. So that'll be super nice. And then over here behind nutmeg in the seedling table, a lot has happened in here recently. So here, I don't remember if I showed you all this the last garden tour, but the seedlings have been going off and I recently plant, planted some new ones in here, but this actually was a seed from my bok choy last year, which is really cool to me because I didn't know how easy it was to save the seeds from those. So that one is from my own seeds and both of these peppers are from my own seeds. This is a jalapeno early slice and this is an ahi rico. This is actually seed from my mom's garden, but I'll still count that. Everything else is seeds that I've bought. A lot of these are plants that I'm trying out for the first time. So we will see how it goes, but they're doing super well and I'm hoping to get them in the ground soon. But we are gonna have a heat wave next week. So I'm sort of waiting on those. These I just transplanted last night, so they need to straighten out a little bit and this leaf got stuck that's probably why so yeah these tomatoes i separated and straightened out which is why they look a little bit in shock today but hopefully they will do better these are determinate tomatoes and it's my first time growing determinate so we'll see how they do i do know i still have some time for these i am worried about the peppers and then lastly back here i have some collard greens have to wait to get those in the ground again because it's gonna get hot soon. But that's what's going on here in the seedling table. Next to it here, you would have just seen my sesame plants on my sesame growing review for a full season. I do need to come in here and harvest a bit more, but other than that, nothing new to report there. My ground cover is doing really well. A lot of it ended up being watermelon, which I wasn't expecting. The seeds didn't look like watermelon seeds, but watermelon is here nonetheless and some of it is actually growing watermelons so I don't know the exact type of watermelon that's growing here I don't know if I'll get watermelons before it freezes but that's what's going on I do have the one pepper plant that I left in the ground I did rip up the rest because we had the soil issue and it's actually giving me a pepper so I'm glad I left it in the ground here but next to it here is my big pepper bed and I'm really really proud of how well it's doing right now. I did recently just have to put these bigger stakes in the ground because the weight of all of these peppers was really making the plants collapse and I did lose a couple of branches. So here is my mystery pepper. The tag said it was a jalapeno. Clearly it is not but it is absolutely loaded with peppers and I found them to be pretty mild like a gypsy. They're just really small, so I'm not sure if they are actually a gypsy. Here's my Mucho Nacho Jalapeno. These are the best jalapenos I've ever grown, to be honest. I love the size. I love how shiny they are. They're really great for stuffing or just salsa, whatever you want to use them for, but really impressed with those. 
Also impressed with my paprika, though I have been all year because it was fairly heat tolerant, but it's just doing so well. And with the cooler weather, the peppers are sizing up again. Here my Serrano is just bursting with peppers. I did just harvest an entire branch worth because one of the branches that broke was from this plant, but there's just peppers everywhere. And I forgot back here, past my giant milkweed, is my Tabasco plant. So these are going crazy. I feel like there's hundreds of peppers just on this plant. I mean, look at that. That's insanity. And they're very spicy. So I hope they don't all ripen at once because there's a million of them. And this also was supposed to be a Tabasco that I started from seed the exact same seed that I started this one, but apparently it's not, it's a Serrano. They're a little bit smaller than my other Serrano plant, but other than that, they are doing really well. On this side of the pepper bed, I have a few other things. I have these Greek pepperoncini here, as well as a bunch of shishitos, which I do not recommend planting next to each other because they look almost exactly the same, but the shishitos are doing really well in here. And then this pepper plant that has taken over the majority of the middle of the bed here is the lemon drop. None of them are yellow at the moment. I don't think, yeah, but they're getting there. They were really productive this summer. They take a little bit of a break and now they're coming back with a vengeance. And then the most special pepper in here, I'd say, is this one right here. I have a couple and this is a fish pepper. Now this one is completely variegated. I have one that's got more striping on it here. This is supposed to be a spicy pepper. I have yet to actually harvest one. So I'm very excited that I have a few peppers on it finally. But the other thing about moving these peppers, getting them staked up is that this now gets full sun, which I'm very happy about before it was really shaded out and it wasn't doing as well. So hopefully now it will ramp up the production in about the, the month we have left before we get a freeze. Speaking of peppers, I do have a couple more over here. These are my candy cane variegated bell peppers. Now they are supposed to be this size. They don't get very big, but when they ripen, they turn red. The only thing I don't like about when they ripen is that they lose their striping. So you can eat them like this. It's perfectly fine. The flavor profile changes slightly once they ripen, but it is perfectly fine to eat one like this. It'll still taste really good, kind of like a green bell pepper. I also have another one over here, which has actually quite a big one. This is a nice size. This is probably one of the bigger ones that you would get off of a plant like this, and it has beautiful striping. Basically, the more variegated the area of the plant is, the more variegated the pepper will be. So this one looks pretty nice too, though it has some damage, something tried to eat it. And then way back here, I have one with quite a lot of variegation. So it's just really cool to see how the variegation of the plant affects the peppers that you get. This is a staple for me to grow just because it's so much fun to grow. And I do like the taste. There's a little baby ant, goodbye. I do like the taste. I think it's super fun and the plants are absolutely gorgeous so I will always be growing it here. I also have my blackberries here. They're obviously not producing but they're growing like crazy and we need to figure out a better trellis solution than this. But moving on over here is the herb bed. Not too much to report here. The middle of my rosemary here died and I don't really know why because the rest of it looks great but the plants are really starting to fill in. The oregano is obviously done blooming. I need to come in and possibly chop off the rest of these dying flowers, but the plant is just taking over. The marjoram too, I really need to cut the flowers, but it's doing well. And I just planted this little parsley over here. If you remember from last year, I had a curly parsley that just took over this entire area. So I'm not planting anything else and I'm just gonna let this little guy do its thing. Moving over to this section, of my raised beds, we have my big, beautiful artichokes that I wish were this pretty this spring. I don't know why they've chosen the fall to do this, but that's okay. I have a beautiful yellow milkweed here. I really like this color. Actually, it's a nice pop in my garden. My lemongrass is going off. And then over here also, I have quite a few herbs that nutmeg is stepping on, which is okay. <laughs> I guess. So I'm kind of turning this also into an herb bed. I have a second oregano plant. 
I have a flat leaf parsley. I have a bronze fennel, which recently had a bunch of caterpillars on it, but it looks good now. It had the swallowtails. And then back there, I have a tarragon. You see, it's doing really well right now, actually. Hey, Nutty. Good boy. He likes to try and eat my lemongrass. Don't really know why, but this is my tarragon. It didn't love being in full sun. So with the shade of these artichokes, it's doing much better. And then I have one nice rue over here. They are a perennial. I don't know if they're edible, but I do have them for the swallowtails. If you could stop eating the lemongrass, that would be lovely. Thank you. This is probably his favorite bed to hang out in because he can kind of hide underneath the artichokes and the lemongrass and then chew on the lemongrass because for some reason he thinks he can eat it even though I don't think it's the best for him. But moving on over here I have kind of another jumbled up bed. The Swiss chard is looking great right now. Oh there is a little jumping spider. So with the cooler weather I'm gonna start eating that soon. The asparagus is going absolutely crazy and I just recently discovered that one of my asparagus is a female, which I absolutely love. They are a lot harder to find than the male asparagus because the male asparagus is more sought after. It doesn't put any energy into reproduction other than the spears at the bottom. But with the female asparagus, you get these little berries and these little berries will eventually turn red and start to dry and then you can harvest them, wait till they dry out completely, and you'll find one or two tiny black seeds inside. And that is how you can get more asparagus plants. So if you guys want to see me do a video about that when they start to dry out, let me know. I'm happy to do it. I know it's not a common thing because most people don't really care about female asparagus, but I do. So I'm really happy that I have one. I also have this huge monster basil plant. Let me back up so y'all can see this. It actually got so big that it split down the middle. Right in here, absolutely split. Nutmeg does like to hang out in here now too, but I did go through the other day and just mowed off all the flowers on my basil. That was a task I had been meaning to do for a while, so I'm glad it's done. And then lastly, I do have some peppers in here. I have this like dual plant. So one of the plants is a banana pepper. The other one is a um, bell pepper, but the banana pepper is doing way better. And I actually have a couple of ripe ones. So that's really cool to see. Next to it is my strawberry and kale bed with a couple of herbs mixed in. So I've got my variegated sage as well as my German winter thyme and my kale. So this one and the one back behind it there, these are holdovers from last winter, as you can see, the bugs have been loving it all summer, but I'm kind of just waiting until the winter and the bugs go away to start harvesting from it again. I might give it a few trims, but it's really coming back with a vengeance after I stripped it during the spring. This one I didn't really have to strip. The bugs didn't love it as much, though I mean they're still doing some damage, but might have to trim it just before I start eating it. And then I put in another dinosaur kale just because it's my favorite type of kale. And the strawberries, just maintaining them until the spring. Back behind it over here, we've got another monster basil plant. When I say basil really likes growing in Texas, this is what I mean. Just absolutely loves growing here. But I have my cherry tomato bed here. I do have a few leeks that I've been kind of keeping. They're like great for a your garden grocery store type thing because they've been ready for like a month now. I've left them in the ground. They just hang out and it's really awesome. But up here I have a bunch of tomatoes that are starting to form. A bunch of fall tomatoes. The plants look a little haggard but there is a lot going on in there. Same with over here. We recently kind of staked up all of the tomatoes, gave them extra support, and we are getting some tomatoes in here. So we've got a couple of little ones, and then this is a big slicer back in here that's just starting to form. And of course, another giant basil plant and some leeks. Same goes for over here. We've got a couple of smaller basil plants. We've got some smaller leeks and some more slicing tomatoes. This one, unfortunately, I guess didn't like getting watered too much, but I've got some more on the way. 
up here. So we'll be seeing more tomatoes soon. Hopefully they'll look better than that one. Next to the tomatoes, this bed is honestly pure chaos right now. The green beans that I planted in late summer have been doing so well. I've actually harvested from them several times at this point. So they're growing another batch right now. Here's a full size one. They're just so beautiful. The perfect fall crop for here. I was really concerned when they couldn't tolerate the heat in the summer, but they really love our fall weather. So the plants don't look really good, but they are producing. They're producing so many beans. And then next to it, I have my carrots as well as a million volunteer carrots that I should probably thin out, but I just don't have the heart to do it. So I just let them grow next to each other. And if you look really closely in here, you will find a bunch of these little guys. So these are black swallowtail caterpillars. I have quite a lot of them in here right now. There's another one, all different shapes and sizes. So here's a smaller one. This one is just about ready to become a chrysalis and then a butterfly, so that's super cool. And I have some onions. So I just kind of let the caterpillars do their thing in the carrots. Like I said, there were some in my fennel. I moved them over here because the swallowtails, they like carrots, fennel, rue, parsley, things like that. So the carrots, if we eat them, we eat them. If we don't, they're food for the caterpillars. Next to it is my sweet potato bed. It's been looking the same for the past few months, honestly. But I'll just go ahead and show you my sweet potatoes in here. You can see that. There's a couple coming over the surface. So hopefully this entire bed is filled with them because it's been a few months now and it's completely covered. Next to it over here is my, what well, was my tomatillo bed, but I have sort of moved it to zucchini but oh my gosh I think it was too cold for them last night they're completely wilted over let me get this open so I can go ahead and show you all right yeah they do not look so good the cold definitely got to them and there's aphids all over them now so I think that's gonna be a wash on them I need to start them sooner in order to get some I think that zucchini is doing okay over there because it's kind of shaded out, but yeah, that one's not gonna make it. My marigolds are doing really well in here though. They're super pretty, look at that. And I do have a nice, big, beautiful rosemary in here. It's doing way better than my other one. And of course, another giant basil, because why not? I have a million of them. So yeah, that's this bed. I wish it looked better, but you know, you live and you learn. And I have clearly pushed the limits with zucchini. All right, so back here behind nutmeg is a couple of things. So these are my fall potatoes that I have been experimenting with. I saw in a different YouTube video that you could grow them in the fall. So I decided to give it a shot and I had probably about a 50% success rate, not as good as during the spring, but at least I have nice, beautiful plants. And hopefully by the time we have our first frost, they will be okay. I also have my compost pile back here, but as you can tell, I actually have a plant growing in it. And this is gonna be a green tomatillo and I actually have tomatillos forming, which is really cool. It took quite a while for them to start forming. I have a few somewhere. Oh, there's a couple back there. So we'll see. We've got about a month until our first frost. We'll see if we can get them mature by then, but that's just something fun growing back here. Moving on to our last few raised beds. Back here with nutmeg, we have the watermelons. I actually have quite a few that are still actively growing, looking really cool. I've also added some of the bulbing fennel, the green fennel, because I do really love to eat it. And these are supposed to be gone by the time it gets cold, but these will take their place. So I'm gonna start slowly adding things like that in. And behind nutmeg here, there's actually a couple more watermelons. So there's a big one right here. I've got one on a sling growing up here. And then I have this one, which is just about ready. Let me see if you can hear this. 
that is pretty hollow. So I will be harvesting this soon. I'm very careful not to overwater this bed to avoid the watermelons tasting too watery or getting split, but they're doing really well. And Nutmeg also really enjoys hanging out in here. It's nice and sunny when the weather's nice. When it's too hot, he hangs out in there, but when it's not too hot, he hangs out right here. He also likes to hang out here in this bed, but there's not really much going on in this side right now. This is where the collard greens will be. But over here, I've got some fall cucumbers. I've got some beautiful vincas and then more carrots. And of course, where there's carrots right now, there's swallowtail caterpillars. So as you can see, they are absolutely everywhere. I, I thought that there were more on the other batch of carrots, but this one I think takes the cake. They are all over the place doing the most. That one will not focus, but yeah, there is a million of them right now. And he's hanging out. We're gonna follow his lead and get a better angle of them over here. So here are the caterpillars. They don't really move around too much except for when they're eating. And then when they are ready to become a chrysalis, they will kind of go off and find a sturdy surface. I usually save them when they get big and have them do a chrysalis in my little tent, but I have a monarch chrysalis right now and they don't get along. So this is a really big one right here. We're just gonna leave them out. They're pretty cool. So I thought I'd give them a little peek. Nutmeg isn't really interested in them at all, but that's okay. It's probably better that he's not. And finally, we've got a couple beds left. This is my pumpkin bed, which I am going to rip up really soon because it looks terrible. But we have a pumpkin in here. So it's not as big as my last pumpkin, but you know, it's the end of the season and we'll see what happens. It's starting to get some color. I'm hoping it'll turn orange soon. So it starts light green, this variety, then it gets these dark green stripes and then it turns orange. So I'm thinking this will be about the size that it will be. And that's about it. Over here, if you remember last time, these were filled with green beans. Those are gone, unfortunately. They all started dying off. I do have my bush beans here still. They have been producing. This one, don't really see any. Just got a little one up there. And then I have some edamame still, some soybeans in here. There we go. So I do have some of those. This one I will end up drying for um, seeds for next year, but I did plant in these tomatoes and I planted them as an experiment, one with fall tomatoes because where I'm from in the north, you cannot grow fall tomatoes, but here you can. And the other experiment is to try and get them to grow up this kind of trellis method as opposed to the string method I have over there. And these I all grew from seed. I started them in late August and this one already has a little tomato, which is really exciting. This is the black strawberry tomato from Baker Creek Seeds. I also did a super sweet 100, two pink bumblebees and a blueberry tomato also from Baker Creek Seeds. The super sweet 100 and the pink bumblebee are all from my own seeds. And then the other two, like I said, Baker Creek Seeds. I also have this giant savory plant that I need to cut back and like use for something, but I don't really know what you use savory for. So if anybody has any ideas, for what kind of dishes I can make with summer savory. Don't hesitate, please let me know in the comments because I have way too much of this stuff. Lastly, over here, the final raised bed is my cayenne pepper bed. I also staked these up with the more heavy duty stakes that my husband made out of two by four. I am very grateful that he's handy because they were so expensive at the store and we got a two by four for like $7 and he was able to make 17 stakes out of it, which is really cool. But these are absolutely going off right now with peppers. It's a little windy, but if I just hold them here, you can see how many I have. It's absolutely ridiculous. Some of them are really long and thin, some are short. Some of them are really fat and long. This one is my favorite one. I'm really hoping that it ripens perfectly. I'm definitely gonna save seeds from this, probably in their own special container. And nutmeg of course is jealous he literally follows me around everywhere it's super cute hey you want to see what i'm doing in here 
and he's really good about not eating the peppers as well. Come on, you can get on in. There you go. But he just has a good time in here. He's super cute. But like I said, all different shapes and sizes. Some of the peppers are starting to grow upright, but though as they get bigger, they'll kind of straighten themselves out. And that's pretty much it for this bed here. All right, so that is it for our garden tour today. Thank you so much for following along as we kind of show all of the changes that have been happening in the garden as we say hello to fall and a cooler weather. If you like this video, make sure to give us a thumbs up down below and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss anything from me and Nutmeg here on the channel. Thanks again for watching and we will catch you in the next one.